Do you know about all the amazing things the Touch Modifier tool can do in Adobe Fresco? You may be saying, hey, Chris, what on earth is the Touch Modifier? Well, I'm glad you asked. The Touch Modifier is that little circle that you may have seen in your work area when you're working in Adobe Fresco. And you may have thought, hey, what is this little circle? And you maybe just ignored it. I know I did that for a little while. But if you ignore it, you're missing out because it can do lots of things. One of my favorite ways to use the Touch Modifier is to use it to turn whatever brush I'm drawing with into an eraser. This is super helpful when you're doing something with like a gritty textured brush and you mess something up or draw through a line that you don't want anymore or need to thin something out. So this is especially helpful when I'm doing something like this lettering treatment where I wanna sort of draw through these shapes instead of just leaving area where the, shape, the letters overlap because it'll help me to make the letters a little bit better. So I'll just come in here and trace over this sketch and tighten it up a little bit. I'll even draw through that center part to make sure that line is nice and tight. Come in here, get that line in there, and then we'll do this bottom part. And then I just wanna get rid of this line here. So if I were to just go ahead and use the eraser, you'd see I get this nice clean edge and you'd be able to tell where I erased. If instead of using the eraser, I go back to the brush double tap the modifier and come in here and erase and you'll see that the texture is perfectly matched. You can also use this if you want to like thin out an area, if maybe this top part got a little too thick, thin that out and come back in, add a little bit more and everything looks perfectly matched. Okay, now that everything's drawn in, again, I'll double tap to activate the modifier. You'll notice that the area inside the circle turns blue. That's how you know that the modifier is turned on. And I'm just erasing what I don't need. Just like I would with the eraser, but in this case, it actually matches. Another way you can use the modifier without double tapping is to simply just hold on it and then you can use it as an eraser that way. There's a lot of video of me raving about the vector trimming tool and it's definitely a game changer. So I got this little sketch here, this little barley man. No, I don't know if it's a barley. A nugget? A, a nu nectar? No. A, uh, a, a hops? Is he a hops? Is it a hop or a hops? Listen, I don't know about beer stuff, but this is a guy that is used for branding on a beer packaging product. A beer packaging project that I worked on. And he needs to be a vector artwork because he's being used on packaging, cans and signage, all kinds of stuff. So it needs to be infinitely scalable. So we're gonna do it in vector artwork. And because he needs to be really small, I wanna make sure that these lines are super tight so it doesn't lose any detail. And this is where the vector trimming is gonna come in super handy. So what I'm gonna to do to get started is I got a new layer going. I'm gonna grab the vector brush and I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna start drawing these vertical curved lines. I'm gonna draw them right through where I want them to end. And this makes it nice and easy to get them to be clean, smooth lines without any weird lumps. And drawing through is gonna allow us to get really nice corners and points where these leaves or, listen, I don't even know what they are. You can let me know in the comments if you know what they are. I think they're like leaves-ish. <laughs> but drawing through them is gonna allow us to trim off what we don't need and give us a super crisp corner. Okay, so now what we can do is use the modifier just like we did before. I'm gonna double tap it. If we leave it in this state, it'll work as an eraser just like it did with the pixel brushes. But if we tap it again, we'll get the second level of the modifier. And this is where the vector trimming feature lives. I don't know if that's what I wanna say. Anyway, all you do now is just draw through what you don't want. So we just come in here, and just cross out the areas where we don't want the lines to overlap. 
and you can do it in a continuous line or you can do it for each of them. It doesn't matter. You could go like this and make it as a long continuous slowly line, cut those all out. And now if we zoom in, you'll see that it's super tight, super duper tight. Look at that, look at that corner. Perfect, look at these, it's just perfection. Okay, so I think these arms might be a little bit tricky. So what I'm gonna do is get a new layer and draw them separately. That way I can duplicate one of them and flip it to the other side and either use it exactly as is or use it as a reference if I wanna redraw it to change it up a little bit. So I'm gonna draw these the same way that I did the leaves or the body. Just continuing right through where I need them to go. So I won't be able to trim the lines where it overlaps with the body because it's on a separate layer. But once I'm happy with where it is and everything's all set, I can go ahead and merge it down and then use the vector trimming. So I'm gonna duplicate this layer and I'm going to grab the transform tool and then I'm gonna reflect it. And this leads me to my third favorite I don't know if this video is about my favorites. One of my, what a, a third thing you can do with the modifier tool. And this is really helpful in a lot of situations. Maybe not as much of this one because it's relatively small. But if you were doing something where you're trying to move something from one side of your composition to the other, and you want it to be in a straight line, that can be a little bit tricky. So when you are in the transform tool, in the transform mode, we can double tap the modifier and what this is going to do is it's going to lock our object as we move it in either an X axis or a Y axis, depending on which way you're dragging. So because I'm dragging to the right, it's going to lock that in perfectly where I need it to be. And now that I got the arms all settled and ready to go, what I'm going to do is just merge these down and then go into the modifier and erase the extra areas. Okay, so this next Okay, so this next touch modifier secret. Not really secrets cuz you can look these things up. This next touch modifier phenomenon. Uh this involves the paint bucket. The paint bucket is a pretty normal tool that you're probably familiar with. You grab a color and you just click and it fills in an area. Simple enough. So let's say you have a little skull that you drew and then you accidentally put a background on it and you didn't want that you wanted it to just be on a transparent background well you could use the paint bucket to do the opposite of what a paint bucket does so for example i can double tap the modifier and tap this white area around the skull that i don't want and what it's going to do is instead of filling it it's going to take it away and you can also use the color margin the same way that you would with the paint bucket. So I can get really nice and tight to make sure that there's no white halo around the edges. That's super helpful, right? I mean, these all are pretty helpful, I think. Let's use this little skull to talk about number five on the list of touch modifier magnificent modules many times. This next feature is called the multicolor swatch. <coughs> multicolor swatch does what you might think it does. It makes a multicolor swatch, but you can also use it with actual images and make sort of like a stamp situation. To use the multi, to use the multicolor swatch, all you do is, can you guess? Can you guess what you do? Yeah, that's right. Use the tap modif the touch modifier. Double tap that, touch and hold. If you look down at the swatches, you'll see the skull appearing there. This might be an extra bonus tip. If you're not using the touch modifier and you're just like drawing something, you can just hold and select that color. So if you didn't know that, that's a very useful thing that I use all the time. You should know that before you know the multicolor swatch. So the multicolor swatch does the exact same thing but it gives us multiple colors. So you can zoom out to figure out how much you wanna get within that selection area. So if we zoom out further, 
we can try to get the whole skull. Let's turn this off, get a new layer going. Now, if we're using the brush that we are using, it's gonna make this like weird thing based on that skull. But let's say you wanna use it like a stamp, like you could tap and it sort of works, but it's not that great. What we can do instead is go in to your brushes and go to basic brushes and just get a hard round brush. This is the most simple brush there is. And then what we do here is you can just tap and that makes it a stamp, which is kind of cool. And if you draw with it, you'll see it makes a, a weird line with your image. But if let's say you want to do a lot of these really quick, we can go into the brush settings here down at the bottom. And what we can do here is adjust the spacing and you'll see them separate up above. So if we just do that, then we draw. Now we can just make a bunch of these things. Let's try some more settings. So if we come in here, we could adjust things like the angle and you'll see that they'll rotate. So if we wanted them to rotate, we could do that. We can go into shape dynamics and we could adjust the size jitter. So this will make it so that the skulls are in different sizes as we draw. We could do an angle jitter and this will like rotate some of them. So it could be a little bit more imperfect. We could go into scattering and we can scatter these skulls so that they're further away from the brush. You can adjust the amount that appears as you go. So it's very random. We go back in, maybe tighten the spacing a little bit. You could very quickly make like a whole pile of, of skulls. If you're trying to like fill an area. Like look at all these, look at all these skulls. And they're like at different angles, at different sizes. Let's say that's not enough for you. We can come into the brush settings here and adjust the stamp count so there's even more of them. And now we've just, we've just got so many skulls. We've got all the skulls. Look what we did. Is that what you wanted? And aside from those crazy features, did you know you can move it wherever you want it to be? It doesn't have to stay where it is. You can just hold and drag it. You can drag it anywhere. You can move it all the time. How about five more? Check out this video. Good talk. That went by quick. It was fuck. That felt like, that felt like that felt like it went by quick. How about do you want to know five more? Hey. Check out this video. Good talk.